Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's NHL slate on this Monday following Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, coincidence or not, I'm not sure why they're doing it, but even though it's a five-game slate, uh, DraftKings is offering uh, uh, higher prizes and higher guarantees for tonight's slate, so we're going to make sure to attack this pretty uh, aggressively. You'll notice that it's a, it's a late start, 7.30 as opposed to seven o'clock. So keep that in mind. Uh, late goalie changes, uh, be on the lookout for that. So what we're going to do is what we usually do is give a kind of a top-down overview of the slate and using, you know, the, the true DFS sheets, uh, get a sense for who the best plays are going to be. And then we're going to do two things. We're going to build a hand-built lineup. Uh, and again, this is just as of, you know, earlier in the day. So, probably not going to end up being exactly who we play, but it'll give you an idea of how to use the tools at your disposal to make lineups. And then we'll do a Saber Sim build um, using that, uh, you know, using that uh, optimizer, or as I like to call it, smart randomizer to create, well, maybe we'll do 30 lineups and see how, uh, how that goes. So first of all, I have daily Roto up and, and, and the reason why is, well, first of all, they're free. I'm um, sorry to, no problem showing what they have. And this is one of the projection models I look at. And it's also uh, someplace uh, that I look to to get team totals, just to get a sense for what's going to happen here. So we're looking at Calgary with kind of a four team total implied Minnesota, a four and LA, a four and Vancouver, a four and Nashville close behind. So all four games, you know, the favorites, are looking pretty close. And and the two the four underdogs all seem to be withering at that 2.5 level. So I'm not saying that each of them have an equal chance to be good fantasy plays because it depends on price and things like that. But assuming that everybody's got it, you know, the four favorites all have the same implied team total, you can go a lot of different ways on this uh, on this slate. Actually there were five games and I guess yeah all of them are very, very similar. Uh Let's take a look and see if we look at Saber Sims implied totals, if it looks a little different. Oh, this is kind of strange. Oh, actually, it's not. It is the same. Um, Calgary close to four, Nashville close to four. So the Minnesota game to have a little closer. Um, Florida's a little more in play. Minnesota's not as big of a, of a favorite. And then the Kings, uh, again, likewise, really close. So the same thing with the four fav with the four favorites, with the exception of, of Minnesota, where Minnesota Saberson has them a little weaker, and likewise Nashville a little stronger. Um, so that's what we're expecting to see. You know, we'll expect to see some some you know Vancouver, some Kings, some Nashville, some Calgary, and maybe some Minnesota and maybe some Florida. Okay. Um, so let's look then at uh, our sheets here, which should be somewhere and what i'm doing is i'm ranking all of the players on the slate by uh sheets value score um which is kind of just my way of ranking the guys it combines both fantasy points uh as a function of salary and point per dollar and uh this is the way i rank the guys now i do have ownership rankings and this is not as much of an ownership based uh, uh, uh analysis this is really just seeing who kind of the best plays are. But then when you actually build your lineups, you do want to, you know, keep that in mind that you do want to have, want to try to at least try to get some low on plays. But this is something that you'll have to get used to if you play DFS is the best plays are probably going to be highest own plays. That's just that's the way it's going to be. Um, you have to get different by, by being sharp with construction and knowing exactly when to pivot off of the chalk. And we'll get into that a little bit, but, but not, you know, that, that requires a lot more, uh, a lot more of our videos to watch. Let's put it that way. So the first thing I'll look at here is, again, what we're looking for are guys that are near the top that are all bunched from the same team. And, and, and likewise, hopefully from the same even strength line and or power play line, because hockey just correlates with itself so strongly. But the first thing I'll notice before you even go any further is that Anthony Bavoyer is a really, really strong cheapo at 4,100. Um, so even if we don't end up stacking him, he's going to be a very, very useful um, piece uh, for, for one-offs. But in addition to that, you do have two other Vancouver's in the top, I guess, 10 here 
So this is going to be a very, very strong place to start. Um, you also notice that Brock Brezer, even though he's on the second power play line, he's on the first EV line, same with Patterson. So these guys all correlate really, really well. And then you have JT Miller, also from Vancouver, um, who is not on the first power EV line, but is on the first power play line. So uh, obviously Vancouver is a really, really good stack to start with. Um, the other thing I notice is, is Nashville. So Nashville, you have Forsberg. Now, I don't know why we have a zero power play line. I have to look into that. Maybe something wrong with my projections. It's got to be on somewhere. And then I see Duchesne and 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 Grandland uh, also in the top 10. So this makes for a very good stack as well. So Forsberg, Duchesne, and Grandland. Uh, and then you could also play Josie to fill this out. But keep in mind, whenever you play Josie, it's very uh, uncomfortable because he's just so expensive at 8,500. So we'll have to see if we can fit him in. Um, so as I mentioned, Vancouver, Nashville, both of these look really, really good. The the other one that's just kind of just sticking out at me here are these two cheapos from Arizona. Now, the, these are not, you know, this is obviously not a top play. This, these are, this is one of the teams that's got a 2.5 team total, but they're just so cheap that they can make a lot of your other stuff go, you know, um, they don't really correlate at all. Um, but if you want to use either of these guys as one-offs, that's pretty strong. Um, well, I say strong, but it could be pretty useful. Let's put it that way. And the final team that kind of just really jumps out is Calgary because Calgary, you have a, have Wegar uh, at defense here. He looks good. And then you have uh, Dubé, who is a 1-1. One -one. So he's on the same power play line as Uyghur. And then you also have Markstrom and Goalie. And then you go down a little bit to Lindholm. So Calgary is not quite as good as these others, at least with respect to just, you know, getting a quick view from the sheets. And the other teams that didn't really show up at all that we were expecting is Minnesota. Minnesota's got one guy in there, Kaprizov, but aside from him, I mean, there's really nobody until you get all the way down to this defenseman. So I think that <laughs> of those teams that we looked at, right, um, Calgary, yep. Nashville, we saw you could stack them. Vancouver was really strong. We didn't see much anything from the Kings when we looked. And Minnesota was just barely okay. So it looks as though we'll try to build lineups either with Vancouver stacked, Nashville stacked, or, or maybe Calgary stacked. So we'll do that by hand. But before I even do that, let's see if we can get any kind of ownership break here. Vancouver, pretty much all these guys will be 15% or higher. Calgary, maybe, well, I mean, Dubé, I have him under 10%, so that's something. That's that's something worth noting. And then Nashville, I mean, they're they're all going to be pretty owned. Um, so that's the decision you're going to have to make. Uh, but we're just talking right now about kind of the best plays and what you could build. So let's just do that. Let's build the lineup with, with let's try all three of them, actually. Let's see if we can put two of them together. That would be fun. So let's uh, pull this up and we'll go into NHL. We'll go into the top shelf. 20K for first. Let's go. Who are we going to start with? You want to start with Vancouver? Yeah, let's start with Vancouver. So as I mentioned, Bouvelier is where you start. He's 4,100. And let's just start piling these guys in. So it was Patterson. And then there was, well, you could play JT Miller as well. And then the Boser, right? So it was a Bouvier, Boser, Patterson, and JT Miller. So you get those four. Now, before we even move on, we do have to kind of plug a goalie in. So what I like to do is just see who the highest rated, cheaper goalie is. Markstrom's 8K. I kind of want to pay down a little bit. So here you go. So Sogard, 7,200. That makes sense. So we'll play him, and we, in this particular build, we won't play the, the um, we won't play the uh, what you might call it, the uh, the Calgary the Calgary players. And by the way, um, this is one thing I almost never do. Like I almost never play a goalie 
against the other players, unless it's it, unless it's only maybe a two game slate. That's as low as I will. Even a three game slate, I probably won't do it. It's just such negative correlation. Um, so we'll put Sogard in. So now we have fifty one twenty five per person. So at this point, you could you could do well one of several things. You could either try to continue on in Vancouver and play like a five man. Or you could see if you can maybe get a three-man from one of these other teams in. So let's try to do the second thing. Uh, we won't use Calgary because we just use the goalie. But let's see if we can make uh, – problem with Nashville is we're going to run into that Josie at defense issue. Um, let's take a look back at the at the, at the sheets here. You got this, this Valamaki here, though, at defense. You could just slot in right now. Oh, but you have Uyghur at 4K at defense. So maybe maybe we won't play Sogard after all, because maybe we do want to play Calgary, just so we could at least start with this defense guy. Uh, so Uyghurd, and then who was the other Calgary's we put in? Because We have to leave him for a goalie, can't forget that. The other were Dubé and Lindholm. I think we'll be able to do this. Dubé and Lindholm. And you could do this extremely easily. Um, you could play a pretty good defenseman, actually, as a one-off, and any kind of goalie you want if you play this way. So this, this really works. Um, to say the least, just for fun. W what if instead? What if? What if we did do the the Josie idea? Can we, can we get away with that? Who are the other? Let's see who the other the the other national guys we've had to play though. Forsberg sixty four hundred, but then these guys are cheap. They're all wings, though. This is the problem. To Shane Granland. Let's see what this looks like. Let's play Cheapo here. Let's play Granland. I mean, we could certainly do it, right? Granlin. We could probably even play for What does it say about Forsberg? He's day to day. He left Saturday after sustaining a hit. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to take a look at that, whether Forsberg is in or not. Um, but if not, you could play Duchesne really easily. Um, so yeah. And then it's just a goalie who we could play anybody. Now we can go back and play, um, the guy from Ottawa and plug in a cheapo here. So the, the lesson here is that these two guys from Vancouver, or these three guys, Alona Patterson, whatever, it really makes things work. I mean, you can play really good pure four threes with Vancouver, Calgary, and Nashville. Um, so that's probably what I would recommend uh, in single entry. You don't have to play Minnesota. You don't have to worry about, you know, not getting any LAs. Um, I think this is, is very, very reasonable for, for a single entry. Um, again, I don't know if it's too chalky for – for you know mme but uh yeah so let's let's go and pull up saberson and we'll have we'll build a whole portfolio of lineups with saberson now again what we're doing is we are uploading my own raw file to saberson if you're a true dfs premium member through say with saberson it'll automatically do this for you but so we replaced uh their projections with mine, their ownerships with mine, and we will build, I don't know, let's build 50. We'll build 50 lineups. We'll set it to 150 max settings. And let's see what kind of lineups they build up. I'm presuming that Saberson is going to get to the same stuff, but you never know. Let's take a look. So interesting. Top-owned player is Barkov. 
Oh, but look at this. There you go. So we're getting full, full blown, <laughs> full blown Vancouver's with like five man's or six man stacks, which is interesting. We look at stack types, for example, all these four twos, four threes, five twos, very, very pure. And then when you look at which teams, Vancouver would be the highest known. But then it gets to, to Florida before Nashville, but certainly before Calgary, which is somewhat interesting. So, um, but nothing, nothing particularly earth shattering. I mean, you're getting the same types of teams. Um, but I, I would say that it's probably better to let Saberson build your lineups than try to do them by hand. Um, because Saberson takes into account all the correlation data between all these players. Um Detroit has a couple of Detroits. That's some serious leverage there. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the thing to remember, not to remember, but remember, you have to keep an eye on Forsberg this slate. Um, and and uh, if he's out, I imagine that these other guys' projections will boost. Um, so keep an eye on that. The game starts, I think, at 8. So it's not the first game, um, but it's not the last. So it's a tricky one to, to deal with. I mean, you want to wait as long as you can, but you do have to make a decision at least on the early game before this game. You might not get that Forsberg news. If Forsberg plays, I presume he can play, but we have to see, you know, I don't even know that that morning skate yet. Just continue to watch the, the news for, for Forsberg status. And one place you can go to watch the news is if you go into Discord, our Discord, within um, here we have this NHL Twitter feeds that will actually just kind of just keep on giving you all this this data of these guys that are missing. And we all the top Twitter feeds we just kind of access um, to make sure that we're as up to date as we can be on on, on all this uh, all the information. So that's about it for tonight's slate. Uh, this is uh, it's going to be fun because it's only five games and they're paying a lot for first. Um, so we're going to be going live at about six. Now I might not be there, so if I'm not there, I, you know Bobby's not going to be able to handle the hockey, obviously, unless not what he plays. Um, so I don't know if I'll be able to update this from you know, giving you any more color, but I will certainly be able to update the projections by then. And again, the point of this video is not necessarily just to show you what, what to play tonight, but to give you, I would say the tools, but yeah, give me the, give me the insight, I guess the tools to build your own lineups in the future. Uh, when you don't, you don't have to come to my videos to watch them. I and mean, look, you're going to need to have good, good projections and, and good optimizers. Like we have a true DFS and, and Saber Sim. So you have to subscribe to get access to all that. But again, the point of these videos is to show you the process and to show you how I build my lineups so that you can not just follow mine, but so you could build your own. Uh, and that will do it. Uh, good luck, everybody, on tonight's slate.